Four deaf community members died that night at Schmengi's Bar and Grill. Shortly after, televised press briefings with the governor, law enforcement, and FBI took to the screen. This still is very fresh. It's new. Scrambling to put forward important safety information. But a vital piece was missing. Interpreters like Regan Thibodeau. And after that all happened, you know, my role, you know, I really realized what are we going to do now? Thibodeau is a deaf American Sign Language interpreter and professor at USM, and she's often recognized as one of the popular ASL interpreters during COVID briefings. They try to maintain that physical distance. She was not at first called by law enforcement or the FBI to be included in these press conferences on October 25th. She literally just showed up. And then we just started sending people, you know, figuring out invoices later, the billing later. That was not what was important to us. The number one thing was access. Those first couple nights, Thibodeau says a lot went wrong with how her community received vital information on TV. One of those who struggled to remain informed was Megan Vozella. She lost her husband, Steve Vozella, also a part of the deaf community. Among others that night, Billy Brackett. Brian McFarlane and Joshua Seal. Vozella recounts chasing down information that night. We kind of like were freaking out. We lost our minds in, in a way because we were chasing information. We didn't know were they at the hospital, had they passed. You know, and often, you know, the captions are there and people say that's good enough. You know, you think that deaf people are English monolinguals, but they are absolutely not. American Sign Language has a completely different sentence structure than English. And Thibodeau says even when interpreters were available, they were sometimes accidentally cut out of frame during police briefings. You know, for you or your mother or your uncle, you want to know right away what's happening. You don't want to wait because you need they don't speak your language. Improvements were made over the course of that week. We are requesting that the AS, ASL interpreter is in all frames. And Thibodeau says eventually interpreters were formally invited to press conferences. We trying to this tragedy raised questions about how the deaf community has access to information. And Thibodeau says it's made the hearing community more aware. Obviously, there's still some confusion. But, you know, there's no committee that has sit down and said, here's the template. Really, bottom line is that the deaf and hard of hearing community need to have equal access to that of people who can hear. In their honor, we will never forget. There's a huge scarcity of interpreters in the state contributing to the issue of equal access. In all, there are roughly 500,000 deaf or hard of hearing Americans who use ASL according to the national census of the deaf population. The ratio of deaf or hard of hearing people to ASL interpreters, 50 to 1. There's a limited supply. So make sure you're requesting interpreters a month in advance. You know, that's, that advance notice is your best opportunity right now. People are reaching out a week or two weeks in advance, and that's really not enough time. So the first thing that you really need to do is say, my first thing is accessibility. I'm going to get an interpreter, and then every other event planning thing comes after that. People don't get that. They the work is not done, but a lot of love and compassion has grown towards the deaf community since that night of the tragedy. A lot of love, yes, yes. A huge amount of support. Um, I feel like the hearing community has stepped up and been involved in sharing that love and support. You know, they see us in a restaurant, in a bar, they can reach out and say, you know, my baby is deaf. They can be like you. They have a future. And, that, you know, that's the best gift that we've gotten, I think, after something so awful, really.